Welcome to the Real Estate Masters Podcast, where we interview the top names in the real estate game. If you want to grow your real estate business, see more podcasts, or get free resources, go to www.remcommunity.com, the only podcast that allows you to directly connect with the guests in many of the highest level names in the real estate game. You are in for a treat with our next guest. Do me a favor, subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, and don't forget to go to remcommunity.com to connect with some of the highest level real estate professionals in the United States through our community and through our high level masterminds. Let's go. Welcome to today's show. We have Karen Briscoe. She is a very successful real estate agent. Um, She's been doing this for a long time. Her team and her company has done well over a billion dollars in real estate transactions. Um, she's got a five-minute success podcast, uh, as well as many books that she's written. So she's got a lot of experience, a lot of great stuff to share with you. And we're probably going to talk a lot about time and how to manage your time better and just get more done in less time. So thanks for jumping on, Karen. Yes, Tony. And I'm uh, delighted to be part of Real Estate Masters and to share um, and visit with you over the next uh, so many minutes that we have together. Yeah, I love people that are doing great things, that have a lot of experience, that think high level. That's what Real Estate Masters is all about. So tell us your backstory so everybody knows where you're coming from. How did you start? How did you get to where you are? Why did you create your podcast books? All that good stuff that you're doing. Uh, Just dive right into it. Well, so I like to say I started out in dirt. (laughs) I worked for a real estate developer, Trammell Crow in Dallas. And that's when we were putting in streets and utilities, buying land, putting streets and utilities, selling lots to home builders. Uh, My husband's career took us to the Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia metro region. And because of the nature of his career with travel and and such, I pretty much became the primary caregiver for our our two kids for about a dozen years. So I was out of the workplace uh, when I wanted, and I share that because I, I... like to tell people they could start at any time. I think that there's sometimes this thought that you're going to miss out on opportunity. And so when I wanted to reenter into the full-time workforce, I really wanted to go back into commercial. And I went to work for the Staubach company and had the Nextel account. Well, that was uh, in the early 2000s. I worked on the sales engineering warehouse offices what I discovered very quickly is once you've seen one sales engineering warehouse office, you've seen them all. And I, and, and it was also during the tech bust. So if you'll remember in early 2000s, and there's really no money in, in disposition, I've discovered. It's, it's, pretty, <laughs> it, it's pretty much the, the drudgery of the business. And so I had my real estate license and somebody said, well, why don't you try residential? And I, I have to say there's this perception that people um, on the commercial side, they deal with the hard skills, right? The negotiation and market knowledge and strategy and all that. And whereas the residential, they are dealing with emotions. And I, so I, I was actually skeptical because I'm pretty much a you know a hard skills kind of person, but I, I discovered very quickly, I actually enjoyed the relationship aspect and became successful at it really quickly. I, I brought a unique perspective on valuing residential real estate. Um, so I made a niche for myself really quickly, met with success very quickly. And that as often happens, met with the um, attention of a top agent. And actually she was number 10 in the nation at the time, Sue Huckabee. And so she asked me to join her. I became her partner and that was in 2006. So, and that, you know, we were all uh, flying high in the market then. It was a very hot market. Um, it started to cool and soften. Um, and then she passed away, sadly, in 08. The market crashed, actually, the same month she passed away. Well, wow. I set about to rebuild the company in a very challenging market and situation and brought on my current business partner, Lizzie Conroy, uh, who has been, we've been together since 2009. And in that process, I had so many people ask me how I did it because. Again, many people, not everyone, but many people survived the correction, but not everybody had, you know, this double whammy. So that led to a lot of speaking, coaching, and training, which led to me having, in in my view, a voice. I was writing blogs for like Inman and other publications um, and 
people said, well, your stories are memorable. And I mean, if you think about it, if you read something or you take a, do a seminar or a webinar or some sort of training or coaching and you don't remember it or apply it, it's just like, you know, that, that is like, just, it might as well just be entertainment, right? If it's not going to be applicable and you're not going to uh, remember it when you need it. And so that had a lot of people saying, well, you should write a book, which led to my, my first book, Real Estate Success in Five Minutes a Day. And you mentioned the whole idea about time. So that came out in, in 2016. And so I've kind of become a, a little bit of a time guru because people ask about, well, why five minutes a day? And, and then I have another book called Flip Time. And then there's two other books that are are 66 day challenge books um, under, underneath this real estate success concept. So, and then you mentioned the podcast, the five minute success uh, podcast, which is now over 350 episodes of interviews with people in real estate, but also in other industries, coaches, uh, authors, trainers, people that are, you know, thought leaders in their area. And we talk about how their uh, business and life operates under the five minute success principles. So that's a, Kind of a, you asked for my my background. That that's a <laughs> in a nutshell. Yeah, no, thanks for sharing that. So time, that's something that a lot of people struggle with. So I, I run virtual real estate masterminds. I I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, and a lot of them are stuck working sixty to eighty hours a week and just don't have time. They that's like that's like their number one complaint. I feel like with any entrepreneur, and it may just be you know most people in general. Right. So I have my take on it, on how you can potentially get more time. You can't really buy time, but you kind of can in a way. Um, so tell us what your top principles are for time um, that you would tell our audience right now that they could go use today. Well, so if people say that they don't have enough time, then one of the first kind of clarifying is there's a quote by Lazu which says time is a created thing. To say I don't have time is like saying I don't want to. So I would really wanna clarify what is you know behind that because people who are doing something they wanna do, I'm telling you, they figure it out. And because time is relative, right? Einstein said that. So if you think about the relativity of time, if you're doing something you don't wanna do or you hate doing, or it's laborious like, well, for example, think about being in a boring meeting or a webinar or being in traffic, not that anybody's in traffic anymore, but just think about that time stand still, right? When you're doing something you love, you're passionate about, it's something that it, it gives you uh, energy, you're in your zone of genius, you're in your flow, uh, then your time flies by. And so that's what makes it relative. So what it is, is it's really not energy. I mean, in, not time, it's energy. Energy is the true fundamental currency of high performance. And it's not really, there many people talk about time like work-life balance. If you think about it from that perspective, if you were saying it like being on a scale or like a teeter-totter, well, like, so it works up and life's down, down, life's up, it works down. I mean, there is no real balance, right? So what um, I, and the other thing about the whole idea of time management, you're not really managing time, you're managing yourself, your, your own energy. And so there's a couple of strategies that I, I share with people on how to uh, kind of break through because many people have, you know, they just have these beliefs, these limiting beliefs about it. So when you say energy, that's a big thing. There's actually a book. I can't remember what it's called. I want to say it's called manage your energy. I don't know, something like that, or it's, or it's a time management book that talks about managing energy. I can't remember what it is, but there's a lot of people that I've, I've had on the podcast that have talked about energy, which is a great subject because you can spend a lot of time on something and get something accomplished very well and effectively, but at the end of the day, it may drain your energy, right? On the other side of it, you may spend a little bit of time on something still get a lot accomplished and feel like you have a lot of energy because of, um, of, because of what you worked on, how you liked it and that kind of thing. So talk about a little bit more about energy. How do you, how do you manage your energy and how do you feel like at the end of the day, 
you have more energy knowing what you know now about time and how to manage it. Well, that's where the whole idea of the flip time love life come, came in, which is a book. And it came out of a, a TEDx open mic talk and also a, a signature talk I did for the Hal Elrod um, Best Year Ever Blueprint a couple of years ago. The idea of flipping time it will, comes from the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, that pyramid you probably remember mm -hmm. from your psychology class. So the basis of the pyramid is your physical needs. Um, and it really is really true when people are in a time of crisis, they often go back to their basic physical needs. And so if you think back to the early days of COVID, what was it everybody was in pursuit of? Toilet paper. <laughs> you don't get any more basic than that. Then you have next your safety and security needs. And that too has become very evident that that is a core human instinctual need that people have a need to feel um, that they're, they're safe and secure in their environment and in their self. Then you have your relationship needs, your esteem needs, then you have self-actualization. So Maslow called it self-actualization. Uh, Gay Hendricks calls it zone of genius. Joseph Campbell calls it follow your bliss. Some people call it flow. The idea is what is it that brings you energy that when you do it, it actually creates creates more and it can happen in in several different ways i found one is it could be like a ripple effect like you do it and it'll have a ripple effect out in your life sometimes it knocks over a domino like you you do that one thing and then everything else becomes easier or unnecessary or becomes more meaningful uh, sometimes it's a snowball so it builds on itself sometimes it's exponential like you could do one thing. I mean, just think about what's happened during the pandemic, the things that became exponential, right? Like Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, did we all know that we, I mean, you and I did because I was, you know, running a podcast and I was, you know, already in that space, but most people had no idea what their capabilities were on Zoom until they were put in it <laughs> yep. and then it exploded. Okay, so you can have an, 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 a truly exponential impact as well. So the idea is you want to do that first. You want to flip the pyramid. Most people work their way up the pyramid. And what happens is oftentimes they run out of time or energy to get to the th things that would actually give them energy so that then they would have more for the rest of it. So, so you said the basic need, so you said the basic needs are on the bottom. So reiterate, or if you said it, the, the things that are at the top, if you said you were to flip it around. So physical needs are at the bottom, then you have safety, security, then you have your relationship, esteem needs, things that, um, that give you self-worth and meaning in your life. And then you have self-actualization, contribution, creativity, Joseph Campbell called it the call to creativity, the call to adventure, the call to those things that make you come alive, right? So the idea is you flip the pyramid, what I found. And when you do that first, then everything else becomes better. Because if you think about it, if you are living your highest and best self, you know, in real estate, we talk about the value of real estate being at its highest, best self. If you're living at your highest and best self, what you're called to do, what is yours to do, then you are going to be in your best relationship with yourself and with the other people around you. You're going to have the highest esteem you can have because you're living in alignment or in tunement with yourself and what you, you're meant to do. You, you'll actually be more safe and secure because really true safety and security is only what you are, what's inside of you, right? I mean, you could just see in this last year, so much has changed that if you were dependent on exterior for your safety and security, you, you were on shaky eye, you know, on thin ice. And then your physical needs. Uh, what I found is, is the more I focus on it, my business actually doubled. It doubled because instead of trying to figure out how to do more, I figured out how to do what, yes. uh, yeah, what <laughs> I'm best at and releasing the rest of it. And that is where you can really you know, if you think about compound interest is, you know, one of the wonders of the world, really creativity is really, truly the wonder of the world. And you know what, you know, you know, what happens though, is most entrepreneurs or just people in general are so busy with their lives and doing, doing, doing 
that they don't take time to sit back and create it, create. I can tell you right now, I, you know, I told you all the businesses that, that I'm, that I have, I'm running and starting and all that kind of stuff. And I'm able to do that because I have time to be creative. I have time to think of those ideas. And once I've come up with those ideas, I figure out how to put them in force and I will dive into them and kind of go back to where I was at the beginning of my business. But then quickly I try and free myself of those activities that I know that are not the best use of my time because they drain my energy mm-hmm. and uh, maybe are very tedious and don't serve the higher purpose. So sorry to cut you off there, but you said no, that. No, it's you you're said a perfect that word example. And- you're a perfect example of it. And if you think about it, it really is... Um, it is the way of the entrepreneur. What often happens is that I'm sure you've heard the E-Myth Mastery, um, the book, the E-Myth Mastery about what happens with entrepreneurs is that they're, they're very good at what they do, right? So then they build a business around that. But then the business becomes almost in a way their prison, right? Because they're the technician. They're the one that does everything. And it's when they can, you know, work on their business rather than in your business is when you're actually going to be able to achieve at a higher level of success. Now, many people are like, oh my gosh, this is just like too, I can't do change everything overnight. I'm like, well, then that's where the five minutes came in, comes in. So start small and build up is the proven method of habit formation. In fact, there's a lot of research, tiny habits, mini habits, different people call it different things. But the idea is you want to break it down into really small increments to break through the limiting beliefs that may be holding you back from doing what you say you want to do. And then build up. So start small and build up. That's uh, what I find is gets people, because everybody really does have five minutes a day. So you'll often start to experience the benefits of it, and then you'll want to do more. And then you'll start to build from there in one of those ways that we talked about earlier. So tell me about your business. So you talk a lot about time and time. it seems like we're both on the same page with time. It's like, we want to do what, what we love to do, which is usually create or sell or, you know, things that really, really drive the business or drive our lives. So tell us about your team, how you operate, and I guess how you put those principles forward in place in your business. So the team is actually for the amount of production we do is really not uh, very big. So it's myself, my business partner, and one other agent. In 2020, uh, we sold $100 million in real estate, residential real estate. Nice. And uh, we sold about 100 units. So you can do the math. That's about a million dollars. We're in a high uh, cost of living area in the northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. metro region. Mm -hmm. And we, we deal with um, a very sophisticated, typically client, although we, you know, meet all people's uh, real estate needs, but we, we do tend to have a sophisticated client in this market area. And I've been a residential, like I said, since 2002. Um, so I'm the mega agent. I'm still predominantly the rainmaker. Uh, that being said, because I have been doing it so long, most of my business is a referral and, and name ID, past clients and that type of thing. Um, and then Lizzie Conroy, my business partner, uh, she is kind of the, the other, uh, maybe, I'm say maybe uh, 40%, and then she does 30%, and then the other agent does another. Uh, so we, we all contribute. I uh, have a staff. Um, so the five-minute success principles, you brought that up, and that, again, came out of people wanting to know how did I run a big team and how did I sell so many houses and at a high level. And that's where I I came up with these core principles. And the first one is commit to get leads. So somebody asked me, you know, what was the best advice you received early on in your, your, or did you figure out early on? And I figured out early on, the person who has the the leads is the one that will always be valuable, right? So you've read read the book. Go ahead. No, which is the book? The, you, you read the book, The One Thing, right? By Gary Keller. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? Gary Keller, J. Papasad. What's the one thing you can do such by doing that everything else is easier or necessary. So it's, a, it's, the same, it's the same principle, right? You get enough leads, you can fig, like you get enough leads, you figure out how to convert them, sell them, you get commission income in, you can pay your expenses, you can level life. So at the top of it, it's get leads, right? So it's the same principle, correct? Absolutely. And it really does make everything easier and necessary because when you have 
you know, a flow of leads coming in, then you can top grade, you can refer out, you can, you have so many choices. When you, you have a lack of business coming in, then you, that's oftentimes when people are operating out of a scarcity um, perspective. So I've always been an active, avid lead generator, generator very consistent and have been um, for, you know, since the beginning of the business. Then the next component is consult to sell. You mentioned that, that conversion. So you get a lead, you get it through the process, it turns into a transaction, turns into business. Uh, there's strategies to the success for that. What often happens is, not just in real estate, but other salespeople, entrepreneurs, they get stuck on a this hamster wheel. They get a lead or they get an idea, they, they get it to through the process and then they wake up and do it all over again. And so the idea of connect to build and grow, the third principle of five minute success is that there are strategies for leverage and scale and systems uh, so that you can create an ongoing sustainable enterprise. And that is the third component. And then what I found is, is that successful people, they have this mindset motivation component. They have success thinking they have success thinking activities and vision. So they have a vision about what they want for their business and life. They think about how to put it into practice and then they do the actions. They actually do the lead generation, right? They actually do the actions to put it into practice. So that encompasses these, these core principles. And I have had now, like I said, over 350 conversations with people on the five minute success podcast. And this, these really, have turned out to be truly universal principles for almost all businesses. It sounds like you break it down to be very simple because a lot of people look at things and they look at it from a, a big global perspective and they, they think it's so big and, and it, you know, it can be a big thing to get to a certain level, but it sounds like you break it down to be very simple, which is, you know, you, you start with getting the leads and then what do you need to do to get the leads? And then you kind of break it down to be to be much more simple. And that's kind of the way that you need to do it, right? If you look at a huge goal and you just try and hit that goal and that's it, that's really tough. But if you look at the goal and you break it down into actionable steps and actionable actionable items, and someone even, um, someone even uh, recommended a book. Um, I listened to the audio book not too long ago. It's called The 12 Week Year, the I believe. The 12 Week Year, yes. And it, By it's- Brian Moran. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so he breaks it down. That's a really good, I'd listen to it, an audio book, and it's a really good book about breaking, uh, breaking down your goals and how to break it down into 12 weeks. Instead of waiting this whole year to try and accomplish these goals, you break it down into smaller, uh, smaller actionable items. So that's, that's that, some good that's stuff. That's a there. great planning tool. I use that with the, my coaching clients. Uh, the, we, we, base everything on the 12 weeks because that is much more manageable. And I, you mentioned actionable. I have always been a firm believer on um, activity tracking. Now there are those out there that talk about time blocking, but you know, here I am, I'm telling you, there is no such thing as time. So uh, what I found with people who time block is often they have intentions of actually doing the activities, which is usually lead generation, but then they tend to figure out all sorts of other things to do and focus on that they don't actually get to the lead generation. So I actually track still very old school, the actual number of contacts I make. And it gives me, for one thing, it's great accountability, personal accountability. And the second thing is, is I can see what level of um, activities I need to do in order to generate the level of business I want. Sometimes I have to double time, which is what I'm doing right now, because we're so low on inventory, supply is very low. Um, it, so it also, it, it helps me with my conversion. I can see which type of leads are more likely to convert and where my leads come from, create a great avatar this way. Uh, so I've been a huge, uh, for, rather than, again, the time, setting aside time to do it, I set aside that I'm gonna do a certain number of activities every day or every working day. Sometimes I, I work ahead, I call that front loading. Sometimes I have to backfill, uh, usually front load. Um, but it, it really is a very powerful, powerful tool. And do you track it every day, every week, yeah. every month? Yeah, I use a, just a, a paper tracking system. And I, I, I myself have pretty consistently done five leads a day has been my 
what what I've done in order to generate five that. leads a day or find contacts where you call five people. Right. I'm contacting five leads a day. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And um, that has led to the level of business that I'm at now. You know, if you ever want to go to the next level, it's a, this is and, a and, first. And, and, and that's not that many, if you think about it. I mean, and, 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 and that's why you call it the five minutes. It's like simple. It's yes, like very it short, is. very simple. Like five yeah. contacts a day is not that much. You just have to dedicate the time to do it. Right. And the thing is, is, you know, different businesses, you know, I, we're like I said, we're in a very high dollar average area, so it, I don't need to sell as many houses to get to 100 million as someone maybe in Iowa or whatever. Um, but the idea is, if you know what it takes to generate the level of business that you want, then you just you know re you know reverse engineer it to what you need to do, and when you track it, you'll have a much better sense of where your business is coming from, and and that is another way right? It's, it's again, back to energy it's to think about, well, who are your ideal clients? Who are your ideal customers and how, what are their aspects of their life that you can then recreate with other uh, situations? And it, it's just a much, to me, it's a much more effectively generation strategy for my business. Yeah. And, and you mentioned the ripple effect or butterfly effect or whatever you want to call it. So like if you do five a day, like, again, that's not that much, but if you do that over months, years, I mean, that's a lot of effect because, you know, you may, you may lead generate, get a, a transaction, but then they refer two or three clients to you. And if you do that over and over and over again, it just can completely blow up your business with just small actionable items every single day. So I love and that. I find that many times people, you know, they bite off more than they could chew, right? And so then they don't do anything well, or they, you know, they get discouraged or whatever. Uh, so that's why I'm back to that, you know, habit formation, start small and build up is really very effective. And then if you want to add on to that, then go from there, but start, start small and get really, and the 66 days is another habit formation. Much research has been done on how long it takes to build a habit uh, and 66 days seems to, is in the one thing so if, if you think about it in terms of the first 21 days the first three weeks most people are there the habits new for them they're excited about it they're evangelists I always tell people think about the person who just got a peloton you know they're <laughs> they're telling the whole world about it uh, they're really excited then the next 21 days or three weeks people are often evaluating do I really want to do this for every day you know, I've got all these other things to do or whatever, I get distracted. And then that next three weeks or 21 days to get to 66, they often start to experience the benefits of it. And once you start to experience the benefits of a habit, be it exercise or eating well or lead generation, then you want to do more. And then it becomes a positive self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, the, the truth is any habit like lead generation is like loss of your teeth you you don't stop after 66 days right you just want to jump start get the get the process in place uh, so that you can um, you know continue it um, but this that's where the 66 day challenges came about was to give people an opportunity to focus on these certain these core components of their business fantastic well if you want to get a hold of Karen uh, check out her five minute success podcast check out her books. Uh, in, is there a website that you would want anybody to go to, Karen, to uh, check out what you've got going on? Yes, absolutely. It's the number five, Minute Success. And uh, all the books are available on Amazon, or you can reach out to me. And if you're anybody interested in uh, coaching, I've, I've got a few slots left open for coaching clients. All right, fantastic. Any last words before we jump off? Yes, my uh, words are that if I can do it, you can too. And so just start today. Awesome. Well, thanks, Karen, for your time. Congrats on your success and what you've done over the years. And thanks for your contribution to the world. A lot of people that are doing uh, things like you're doing, writing books and things like that, um, it's not nearly as uh, commended as it should be because that's you know a lot of time and effort you put into those things to to get the word out and to help people. So commend you for that. And thanks for your time. I look forward to connecting again soon. Okay. Thanks for listening. Now go to www.remcommunity.com to connect with today's guest, see our high-level masterminds, and to get free resources.
Don't forget to share this with a friend and leave us a five-star review. We'll see you on the next episode.